Hi everybody and welcome back to another edition of Maverton Live Extra. How's my hair? It's good. But Is that brilliant. okay? Because yeah. often with the camera it's start right. rolling and then she says your hair, it's a mess. Yeah. Is I think my okay? hair is the one that's a mess today. But no, your hair is looking great. Look but, at this, but this is a slightly challenging episode because I don't know what's going to happen. That's right. Julie just said, why don't we do an episode where we sit down in front of the fire and you know nothing and I'm just going to ask you questions. Yeah. So I'm going to interview Luke because actually there are things I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so this and is so, this is um, this is a little nerve-wracking. No, and I think you, I think you'll all want to know as well. But sometimes with Luke, you're so busy that actually, when we do these Matt Britton Live extras, I actually learn quite a lot of what's going on. And it's only during when we're filming the episodes, I'm like, really? It's true. That's because, happening. It's so because, true. Um, we do have the same lives in many respects, but they're also sometimes quite separate. And the same way that Julie learns about me from these episodes, I learn about her from social media. <laughs> I didn't know she was going off to Kenya. No. I didn't know she was in Italy. <laughs> I look on my phone. I look over in the house. She's not there. Oh, she's sitting next to a lion. <laughs> oh, she's in a true. fantastic cheese shop. <laughs> oh. So, you know. It's, that is such an exaggeration. He only only a little bit, though. No, no only a big. little bit. Anyway, this is about you right wait, now. Wait, wait, wait. So, if I don't want to answer the questions, what do I do? No, you're going to want to answer them because it, I'm going to. It's going to be. I'm going to narrow it in to questions around running an estate in the 21st century and kind of the changes that you've seen from when you were younger and when you didn't have the responsibility and to now that you do have the responsibility. And I know we have it together but you know technically this is your family home this is your family history i add a this, little bit of something but this is feeling like an episode of american viscountess your other channel that's where you go and meet people with historic houses yeah, exactly. and estates and you ask them questions and that's interviews. right that's why I, before this i shouldn't said i just, know what i'm doing should we jump over to the other channel <laughs> no. okay we'll do no. it here. i know what i'm doing so i know what questions to ask and luckily you know i've been able to go around to other extraordinary historic houses and meet with all of the owners and ask them um, questions. Now so you can see that I'm stalling because I'm slightly nervous about what she's going to say. But in the meantime, there's a really important thing that we haven't said, which is 50% of people watching this episode have not subscribed to our yes. channel. Did you know it was that high? Yes, I did. It's unbelievably did. high number. I watched YouTube So why analytics. wouldn't you press that Subscribe button. Subscribe, but also turn there. notifications on because then be you'll there. somewhere it, around. Yeah, but turn of, notifications yeah. on because then you're the first to know when we when this video premieres or when the next video premieres. We're always premiering videos, and of course, then they stay on and, the channel. But it's nice when a video does premiere. We're there chatting with everybody during the premiere. We it's are. Fun. We're, There's wherever a huge community we are. Community now. Some, wherever we quite, are. Quite often we're out. Kenya and yeah, lion Kenya, in the background. Italy. Um, I'm sort of at home reading the paper and, you know, twiddling on my phone, answering no. questions, which is right. a delight. Let's, right, let's okay, get on to your the, first, let's first get question. get to the interview. So, um, I think for me, f first and foremost... How many questions are there going to be? There's going to be five. So five. there's going to be five questions. Okay. So, um, try not to make them too long-winded because we know Luke can kind of... Is this... Is this I'll, don't worry, because I'm the presenter, the host of this, I'll be able to rein him in, shut him down when I want to go on to that next okay. point. So I think first and foremost, um, you know, the question that I have for you is you obviously grew up knowing that one day you would be taking over Matt Britton Estate. But during that period, you know, when you were at school and you went off to university, was it in the back of your head thinking one day I'm going to have to take this over and I'm going to have to run it and these are the things I want to do? How did it feel growing up knowing that one day you would be, you know, in charge. Yeah, that is a really interesting, loaded, multifaceted, complicated question. And I think it's an important one. The truth is that growing up, you, you do become aware of these things, probably arranged around about 10, 11, 12. And uh, that was the point, I think, when I saw my parents starting to take on responsibility and I saw how it was impacting their careers and they were needing to do more 
down here as my grandfather was um, slowly needing to hand things over. So I would say that it absolutely affects one's sense of one's future. Um, and for me, if I'm completely honest, I'd always had a sense that um, Mapperton was a struggling estate, that mm. it was very hard to make the estate support itself, sustain itself, because incomes had dropped and dropped and dropped through all the traditional sources, in particular agriculture, uh, and that it was going to be really hard going. Um, and so I felt a kind of obligation to try and go out in the world and do my own thing before mm. taking on Mapperton. Um, and, um, and so I also had a sense of there being a kind of first part to my life which wasn't Mapperton, and then there would be a part of my life that was dominated by Mapperton. I think we're in the dominated <laughs> we part are. now, aren't we? Yes. Um, but that first part, it meant I wanted to kind of pack in things that I knew I wouldn't be able to do. And so I was interested in, in doing things that interested me, you know, the businesses that I was involved in, the film school that I ran. And so I tried to pack a lot in before the responsibility came did. my way. Yes. I don't know whether, does that, yeah, does that answer? But I think the really interesting is, is how I felt. And I think I felt a bit daunted. Mm. And I think I felt as though I knew it was going to be difficult. Um, and and you, um, so you weren't looking forward to it, would you say? I mean, to be in all honesty. I don't think I was particularly looking forward to it. I knew that it was an immense privilege and how lucky I was to have such a wonderful place to live. But I don't think I was looking forward to it in, in that sense, that there was a kind of golden moment when I was going to take over Mapperton. And, right. Because I knew it was going to be incredibly hard work. Yeah. And guess what? It it's is. It's incredibly hard work. It is. Inc I mean, I think it's harder than probably you and I ever imagined. I, I know for me, definitely, yeah. as the American marrying into the family, you know, you, I've, you know, personally, and, and of course it's naive uh, of me to think this, but it's, you know, I didn't grow up here. And so you have these, uh, you know, in your imagination and what you see on TV, this story being told that it's all blissful and perfect and your hair looks perfect all the time. No, 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 no and, but, but I think, I think but, what, and, what we need to do here is, is sort of roll the clock back because there certainly was a golden era of living in country houses, a sort of Edwardian period when quite a lot of families lived pretty luxurious yeah. lifestyles with lots of staff um, and, and the, the, the heads of the families, the heirs, um, often didn't have to worry too much about making ends meet because there was quite a lot of income coming in from all of the different parts of the estate. And I think one of the things I was also very conscious of was that we had lost our family home and estate in Cambridgeshire. You know, that mm -hmm. my grandfather had been forced to sell that after the war because things were so difficult. And therefore, I had a sense that that had happened before. And we really didn't want that to happen anymore. We didn't want to lose any more than we'd already lost. Mm -hmm. Because Ma Mapperton is, is much, much smaller. and We've lost lots of furniture and pictures. And the amount of land here is very, very considerably less. And so there's this sense of, of really trying to hold on to what's left, which is part of why we do this. Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. No, it's um, so that was one question. There's okay, was four that, more. Was that, that was quite long. Brilliant. Ended, wasn't no, no, it? It, was br it was really brilliant. You I mean, I was, yeah, I, I did. It's OK for me to feel, you know, so this is, you know, walking in here sometimes and seeing the leaks and yeah, we just can saying, get, good we can, grief. We can get a bit <laughs> overwhelmed. Not, yeah, is, over is exactly. The yeah. So, and, it, and it's also true that we, we live here in a way that is quite different to how these places would have been lived in uh, 100, 200 years ago. Uh, even, you know, Mrs. Labuschere in the, in the 20th century, um, you know, first half of the 20th century, she, she lived here and, she, and she, she, she had responsibilities. But I imagine that quite a lot of her time was spent doing things that were actually... Mrs. Labuschere was um, Luke's grandfather after he sold Hinchingbrook. He bought Mapperton. Um, so much the, pre the previous, previous owner, owner to our, of, to our of, family. Yeah. Um, I imagine she had quite a lot of time to do things that interested her. And actually, the truth is that while Julie and I are here, ninety-five percent of the time we are working yeah. on one thing or another. We are. There are some fun bits too. Of course, there. Are. I'll get yeah. onto that in a second. So, second question is: so all of a sudden you've taken over. 
your parents have transitioned and handed over the management of the estate. Did you have an idea as to, and this is pre-pandemic, so I'm in, because there's gonna be two questions here. Um, pre-pandemic, did you have an idea as, in, in any stretch of the imagination that you wanted Matt Burton to stand out or you wanted to make it different or did you feel like you're just going to do what was necessary for now to get your head around it in order just to keep it going as is or did you have a great vision? That's another really good question and I think it's a bit of both but one thing about me is that I've always in my career been involved in growing things. So I'm not really interested in things that stand still, mm -hmm. um, which probably means I take on a bit more risk because I want things to evolve. I want to invest and start new things. But I think in Mapperton's case, it's been absolutely essential. I mean, the moment these houses and these estates stand still, they're essentially sinking. And I think that I That's was always aware that um, we needed to kind of innovate and come up with creative ways of standing out and doing things differently. Um, so when I first came here, I realized that actually there was one area where we just weren't very strong and yet we had massive potential and that was weddings. Mm -hmm. And weddings have been a real help, a real bonus for lots and lots of country houses because the income can be quite substantial and really, really can help support these places. And that will continue. But weddings are becoming more competitive. You're now allowed to get married, um, not just in licensed places, but you know, anywhere in the countryside, or at least that's, that's coming along. Yeah, that's and, that, and that means that we can't just think about traditional sources of income like, like weddings. Agricultural income for us is, is very, very limited. Um, residential income from the properties um, there's so much investment in these houses that's required that again, it, it's, it's not that much. So we did have to come up with some big new ideas. I, 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 but I think go, we, don't go I'm not going to go ideas. into those big new ideas, but, 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 um, but that's also more fun. It is more, it is definitely more fun. So we arrive, you know, five, six years ago and, um, and we start to sort of run the place, but, uh, you know, our kids were younger then. And so I was mostly in London and you were coming back and forth up and down to London and then fast forward and we were doing, you know, we were trying to grow the wedding business. Um, you put in a new road so that people wouldn't go down the main drive. We obviously, if you've watched the video of our restoration story in 20 minutes. So there were things, improvements and with the help of grants, we were able to of course restore the coach house, which has became our event space and cafe. But then all of a sudden, so we were taking along doing these things and growing where we could traditionally. And when I say traditionally, having the cafe, having the shop, having an event space, um, doing weddings. Um, and then all of a sudden the pandemic hit. And I think for you and I, that was quite a shock. So my question to you is when the pandemic hit and we were here and we were, we had no visitor income, all weddings were canceled. What was going through your head during that period of, uh, you know, this unknown period where no income is coming into the house and gardens? I was quite miserable. I thought we were going to be in serious trouble because we have this team of staff that rely upon the income that we were getting from visitors and weddings. And yet we had no visitors and we had no weddings. And so we were facing this really terrible period of thinking that we might have to make staff redundant because we wouldn't be able to afford to pay their salaries. Luckily, we didn't have to do that for the most part um, because the government stepped in and supported people's salaries in this country through something called the furlough scheme. Mm -hmm. So that meant that, that we were able to keep going. And, um, but it was, a, it was a really worrying time. But I think you know, what often happens when you have these big shocks is that it forces you into a position of thinking differently. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we have thought differently, but maybe I'm not allowed to go there. No, so that leads me on to my next question. And so obviously we're here, we're talking on camera. We've got Stephen and Claire there. We're, we're, we're you know, this is gonna be uh, premiered and it will stay on our YouTube channel. During the pandemic, we started to do live tours every Tuesday at four o'clock UK time with myself, my father and mother-in-law, 
and Luke was doing the camera and we would have a child usually doing the sound. And every Tuesday throughout, in particular that first lockdown up until July, so basically from April, I think we started until July, we would go live and we would ask people to support in any way um, a certain project, whether it was the repointing of the church tower or, and the donations were incredible because, you know, in order to maintain this part of um, England's heritage, people, we people were incredibly generous. Incredibly and, generous. And the wonderful thing about those videos is they're still there. In fact, there's probably an old tall playlist yes. on, our, on our channel. Oh my gosh, that you we can should go do to. that. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're pretty cool. So, do you think that mm. having that, that became really successful and everybody from around the world really enjoyed it? Whether, whatever their time zone was, they would get a, a, a cup of tea and do it. And I think for you and I, we realized that this was working. I know that that was the inspiration for what we're doing now. But did you ever imagine that YouTube was. And, and Patreon was the way forward. And what well, were your thoughts around moving a historic yeah. house that traditionally probably shied away a little bit from social media? You know, we do yeah, traditional. Yeah, I don't like social media. Yeah, but she's, she's the social but media girl. You, you really started to embrace it. I did. Well, I did. I, we embraced the video. Yeah. Um, you can't yeah. say that I've embraced social media. Don't bother trying to find my social media channels. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm talking I'm, I'm about Matt Burton. No, but I'm, but, I'm Matt Burton estate. On the, on social Matt media. We have a as oh, a small yeah, historic right. house. On we the, have on quite the social a big media. social media following. Yeah. So, so Matt Burton social media, absolutely, and that's largely thanks to you, but also thanks to Charlotte, who who works in the team on the marketing side. Yeah. So I suppose that at that stage. Um, we had learned something really important from the pandemic, which was that if we went out onto YouTube and we gave these tours, there were people who were actually quite interested. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, we hadn't really thought about no. that before. No. But I have to say, just um, to my own um, surprise, we've ended up in a place that I had been thinking about for some time, which is that I was always conscious, and my, part of my background was in film and television, that a place like Mapperton has lots of stories to tell. Why does it have lots of stories to tell? Because it's got interesting people and it's got interesting historical elements. And so from a filmmaking standpoint, there's also always beautiful things to look at. There's objects and pictures that have stories and there are people who weave their lives around these things. And so I'd had in my mind probably for quite a while, I probably never talked to you about it, this idea that there was See? something called- I told you I learned something, something new Something called videos. Mapperton TV. <laughs> and I thought of Julie learning to grow vegetables in the garden and that would be something. And I thought that, um, you know, I could be out, um, you know, meeting with farmers and tenants and talking about livestock, something I knew not very much about. And we could talk about renewable energy and, and all of that. So, so I suppose there had been something lurking. Right. And then we had the success with the live tours through YouTube during lockdown. And we realized actually maybe there was a larger community of people who would be interested in our stories. I think if we jump 50 years from now, things are going to have taken an even more extraordinary turn. And this is where I think with all of our experience from Afton Live, we're in quite a good position. So here oh. we go, here's, here's my big idea. Meta Mapperton. What do you think? That's the name of Facebook. Meta Mapperton. Stephen gets it. Stephen gets it. What? You can what? see he's Met behind the camera. Meta Mapperton. Yeah. Well, the idea is that Mapperton enters the metaverse. Yeah. I don't even and know what the metaverse is. She doesn't I don't know what the metaverse is. Everyone well, I, do, I yeah. do. And and so we could have virtual visitors sitting where Stephen and Claire oh. are now today. Okay. And we like can have other ones in. over there. Well, they beam just, they beam it. Well, we're all wearing wonderful VR and we're all looking at each other and we're in a Mapperton environment, yeah. but oh, it's a sort of semi virtual. I don't like it. Virtual Stephen's real, saying no. You're, okay. you're, I'm going to move on to my one. last question. And, I'm gonna, and, yeah. and I think. See, I told you, I knew there was going to be a point that he was going to kind is, of go off piece. Is, and, is the future. Oh. Right. I'm sure we're Stephen gonna, secretly remember? agrees with me. So we're going to go on to question number five, the last question. Lucky for you. Lucky I'll bring it back to that. Um, so here we are. Last question. So we've now moved um, past the pandemic, hopefully, and we've established uh, our YouTube channel, Matt Burton Live. We've established an amazing 
uh, platform Patreon where our patrons help to uh, support us in the repairs and restorations here, in particular the, uh, the 18th century, no, it's the 17th century pool now, we think, and the repair of the 17th century pool. So our patrons really do help um, in uh, certain projects that we have here at Mapperton. There's, they're always ongoing. I mean, one day I will get those tapestries done, but there's some projects above that. So we do want to, I do want to say thank you to our patrons. Never in a million years would we've ever sort of imagined that um, we would be able to do something like this and so that everybody can enjoy and, and feel that they have a part of Matt Well, and they, and they really do because the lovely thing about our patron community and please consider joining, it's patreon.com forward slash Matt We can probably put a little QR. Matt Britton Live forward slash Matt Britton Live. Oh, you're quite right. I got that wrong, didn't I? Forward slash Matt Live. But if you don't want to type, you can probably QR code it mm -hmm. uh, in the corner. And the lovely thing about that is we've got a, a wonderful community of people and we interact with them. We post things, we answer questions. Some of our community are even getting to know each other yes. outside of yeah. Mapperton Live. It's brilliant. And arranging to talk and possibly even meet in person. Yeah. I think, I think that's brilliant. It is brilliant. Here we are, uh, 2022, and we're busier than ever. Yeah. But, and you've really moved on to sort of the traditional historic house projects, if you like, um, in developing the estate. But what are you the most excited about in the near future? Um, you know, I'm giving, giving yourself two to three years here. Where do you see um, Matt Britton evolving in particular, in a particular area? So there are two really interesting Mapperton worlds at the moment. Not quite the meta Mapperton that I was talking about. Thank goodness. But we've got, we've got the digital Mapperton world, which is this world of YouTube and Patreon. Mm -hmm. And I can't pretend that I don't find this exciting because I really do. It combines so many things that interest me, telling stories, building a community, filmmaking, hanging out with you, that's what nice. could be better? Um, um, so that's the sort of digital side. So, I'm, so that, that really gets me up in the morning thinking about that. The other one, of course, is what's happening beyond the house itself with Mapperton Wildlands. Mappertonwildlands.com, if you haven't been to the website, oh, yes. please, please go. Oh my gosh, it's just launched. That's um, so exciting. And Mapperton Wildlands, as people who've been watching the channel will know is our rewilding project. And that's really just taking off and blossoming at the moment. And I think what's so interesting about that Can, is that it repre... No, 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 because oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm mid-sentence. You okay, can't okay, quite okay. shut Sorry. me down yet. What's so interesting about that is it represents the next stage of the evolution of the country house and estate, which is that we've brought visitors into the center, into these houses. But I was having a fascinating conversation with Tim Connor, who's a local historian today, and he was he who wrote the book, wrote the, the Mapton book, book, which you should also get if Link you haven't down already. Below. Um, he was saying that he thinks that the traditional visit to a country house, where you go and walk around, you have a guided tour, and you have a cream tea, he thinks that's a very 20th century idea, and of course it's probably going to continue. People are going to enjoy that for many years to come. But he thinks that actually part of what's going to be happening over this next period is people's access to the countryside. Mm. Because that access hasn't been available because a lot of this land has been farmed and it hasn't been appreciated for all the wonderful things that it does for wildlife and biodiversity and carbon sequestration and water quality and air quality. But most importantly, human connection with nature. People are increasingly wanting and valuing that connection. Yes. And we are providing a way for that to happen. So we're just at the start of that. And it would be really interesting in, in 10, 15 years to look back and, and see what that's meant to people and how it's also helped us because it generates income to support all those leaks, those roofs, that's right. those repairs. Well, I think it's honestly, it's wonderful just to see how Mapperton has really, really evolved from when I uh, first came here 20 years ago. And then, of course, when we started running it. Can I interrupt you? Yeah. 
because Julie's just wrapping up at the moment. This is like a sort yeah. of outro. But before she does that, I think we need to give her some credit. Because, credit. Because, because a lot of these changes just wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for you. Not only is she a superstar in front of the camera with her own previous series on historic houses, but you're just full of energy. People get so excited when Julie, they know Julie's coming down because, uh, I don't know, you just sort of lift people's spirits. Where I, you know, I'm a bit doom and gloom. No, you're um, not. No, but, no, no. Um, but, well, but, thank you. But I think, hmm. you know, and, and you're going to think about the other things that we've done here. So, for example, yoga retreats. Yes. I mean, we've converted lots of bedrooms and bathrooms in this house. We'd never have done that if it wasn't for the income that we get from yoga, yoga retreats. retreats. So those are, those are yeah. supporting as well. And it's really nice to be able to bring yoga here. You know, it's yeah. my passion. And, you know, yoga in the historic house you never really saw it before. I do feel that I was one of the yeah. first, um, well, I think I might be the only sort of yoga, yogi with a title that lives in a historic house that... So we, you know, we did come across one or two others. We won't say who they are. They're not as good as she is. And they, they, can't, they can't do that funny thing where she stands on her hands. It's called a handstand? And, and her, no, but when your legs then sort of twist backwards over your ears. Oh yeah, crazy And you end stuff. up in a sort of yeah, strange... Stephen can probably show a picture of that because why not? We can show it off. Anyway, I, anyway think, but yeah, I think we're, so we're, I, we're probably I, at the, the wrapping up stage. We are the wrapping up. And but I'll we, pat you on the back and you've patted me on the back. Yeah, and, that was nice. And, and here's to the next 25 years here's to the of next Mapperton. 25, 25 years 20? of Mapperton. And I, I think we should do this a video like this In 25 year. years. We'll come in on our Zimmer frames. Every, every year. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, do comment down below. If you have any other questions for Luke, ask him down below. And we are, we do try to um, answer back as many comments um, and questions that we can. But so we ask answer them down all below. questions on, on Patreon. Patreon. So if you become good a patron, point. all your questions will be answered and they're answered by me. He's or, very good Or at Julie. It. YouTube, we get few too many comments to answer every single one. But we try. But we really value them and we like getting them and reading them. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you.